guys, I hope you're all having a wonderful day and welcome back to my channel. I really missed doing my little chatty videos where I would just sit down and cover a topic for like half an hour and talk to you guys. So this is kind of like one of those videos, it's a get ready with me, but I'm focusing more on the questions that you guys have for me. And if there is a question I did not cover that you guys had, please leave it in the comment section down below. I'm talking about Disney, talking about makeup, life, all those types of things. So I hope you guys are ready for today's video and let's get started. All right, so I already went ahead and primed my eyes. I'm starting off with my eyeshadow today. I'm also using this Natasha Denona palette I got in my BoxyCharm. The BoxyCharm sends to me, so thank you, BoxyCharm, for sending me this palette. I've always wanted to try her shadows, um, and I never have because they're usually pretty pricey, but I figured I'd play with this today because I just love these shades, and I feel like they're really nice and warm. Also going to pull my hair back before I get started cute little mini mouse ears these are a newer one that they've launched i also do think they probably have them on the website if you guys wanted them but i've noticed that they've launched a lot of cute ears past like couple years and this year especially even though the parks are closed i think they still do they have these on their website so i'm just going to jump in i will probably list all the makeup products i'm using or let you know before i start using them this is going to be less like a makeup tutorial though and more of just like a chat video i used to do those all the time and honestly they're my favorite and i really want to get back into them so that's kind of more of what this is i just thought it'd be more engaging doing like a get ready with me even though I'm, again not going where because i'm currently quarantining still quarantining i just got back um, from florida and i did find out my test results today they are negative for covid so that's great um you can develop covid though up to 14 days after you were potentially exposed i got in wednesday so that was my last day of travel i got in on wednesday so technically that thursday it's been exactly like seven days um since i had my first day so did get tested though and it came back negative which is great but again still quarantine just to make sure And I also prime my eyes with the P. Louise base and then I'm going in with this eyeshadow palette. First using this shade just all over my lid and then probably using this pink shade here in my crease. I did not do the best job this time. Um, the day I decided I wanted to film a get ready with me, I posted it on my makeup account, Instagram and my stories and it's just like, hey, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I did have some things I wanted to talk about, so it wasn't gonna be the end of the world if no one responded. Um, but I did get a few responses, so I'll be going through some of the things that you guys asked. Um, but of course, I did not give you guys a good enough heads up, so if there's something that you guys want to know or have a question about, please let me know um, in the comment section down below. One of the good things I feel like about my videos not doing as great as they used to in terms of views is I feel like I can actually respond to you guys, all of you guys in the comments, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so just let me know if you guys have any questions or thoughts. I would love to answer them. The first question I got was from Irresistible Ears and they ask, what is your favorite Disney park? Ah, uh, I mean, assuming that's based off the ones I've been to. So obviously there's ones um, like Tokyo and Shanghai and Paris that I have not been to. I actually took the dark brown, so we're just gonna start with that. Um, there's obviously parks I have not been to and I feel like I can't really judge those ones. So based off the ones that I have been to, they're all the parks um, in the US, all the parks. I, mean, I guess there's like six of them if you're not counting the water parks. I would prob, oh my gosh, that's a hard one. Honestly, I'm just like a big classic you know, fan. So probably either say Magic Kingdom or Disneyland. Um, actually had that conversation with my friend when we were at um, Disney World last week and talking about which one's our favorite. And honestly, I do think Magic Kingdom and Disneyland are my favorites, even though like all the other ones are fun. It's just like, if I had to go and was only there for a day, like which one would I pick? And I would always pick Magic Kingdom or Disneyland. I think I might like Magic Kingdom better only because they have more things to do and it's just bigger. Um, I, okay, obviously I'm biased towards Magic Kingdom because that's where my personal dreams came true um, in, in comparison to Disneyland. And I also like the fact that they have Ariel's Grotto, which is, you know, Disneyland got rid of it for Tinkerbell, which honestly, it's so cute at Disneyland. Um, but I think it's cool that, you know, Magic Kingdom has, you can both meet Tinkerbell and Ariel, which is, I mean, under normal circumstances, not right now, obviously. But I would say probably Magic Kingdom if I had to pick one, but obviously I like them all for, different reasons. I feel like this is like asking a mom who her favorite child is. I think I also like Epcot too. I think Epcot's also really special. Um, that is where I did all of my training as both an attendant and performer. And I had my first days 
out meeting people um, at Epcot for both of those roles. So I'd say that like for me, there's a lot of nostalgia at Epcot for those reasons. And I think there's a lot more fun things to do there in the terms of like, you can create your own magic um, when it comes to like doing things with friends. Like there's not as many like rides or attractions. So you're not really getting, and they're building on that, but you're not really getting a magical experience from the things you do. It's more about spending time with people. And I feel like I'd say my favorite memories from going to Epcot are more about the people I've been with rather than the things I've done. So yeah, I'd say Epcot is probably a good second. I've actually gotten two questions on this one saying, did you feel safe at Disney? Did you feel they were doing everything they could be? And then I, not, I got another question from someone saying, did you feel safe at Disney? And the first time I saw the just, did you feel safe at Disney? I was like, do you mean like when I was working there? Did you mean on my trip? Um, I did just get back from going to Disney World. I did not take, I mean, I ended up sharing photos, but for a while I was like, I don't think I'm gonna share any photos of my time there. Just because I respect that everyone is at different spots right now in terms of like what they feel comfortable with. And even as the cases have definitely skyrocketed the last like week, two weeks, I don't think we would have gone had it been like a week later. And even when we went, I was like, there was definitely times where I was like, oh, <sighs> man. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. Um, so obviously it's not gonna be 100% safe and I will say that. And I did not take any vlog videos. I did take a couple videos here and there thinking like I might do an Instagram reel or like a TikTok video, but I just didn't want to do a vlog on YouTube and was not planning on doing any videos related to it. So if you guys really, 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 really wanna hear me talk in depth about what was going on, what they were doing, and it's not gonna be like a, you know, it's so much fun, it's so great, it's gonna be like a no BS, like, this is what I thought was safe, this is what I thought wasn't safe, because there's definitely gonna be times where I felt like it wasn't safe. Um, and obviously it's never gonna be 100% safe because it's a pandemic going on right now, and like, um, like I even know someone who's a cast member who had, went to work and got COVID, so they're not gonna say that, but that's still going to happen, and so it's, it's not gonna be 100% safe, but all have to say, I didn't really wanna create a video, you know, showing all the highlights of it and making it look super fun and make someone think that like, okay, it's great for me to go. And then they go and get COVID. Like, I just don't really want to be in that um, spot. And I just don't feel like it's appropriate for me to make a video, you know, in the sense of making things seem like everything's hunky-dory when it's not. So um, was not planning on doing a video, but since you guys were asking the questions, um, I will just briefly say overall, I would say 90% of the time I felt safe. Whether or not I was safe, I, uh, it's hard to tell. But I would say that the things that they did, like was even thinking about like a grocery store, how safe do you feel? Cause like, yeah, when you're checking out, they have little like most grocery stores, I feel like sometimes they don't, but they have spots on the ground where they tell you like where to stand and like how far apart when you're checking out. But I feel like they don't necessarily, they don't wipe down everything in between each person. You know, like they, sometimes the grocery stores have a plexiglass, sometimes they don't. Um, you have no control over who's touched things and who has it and where people are coming. You're not getting your temperature taken when you go to the grocery store. So in those aspects, and same with like going to the mall, if you were to go to the mall and go into a store, obviously things like the past week have changed. But generally speaking, if you were to go to the mall and go to a store, you wouldn't have your temperature taken, taken. You would, you know, assume that everyone there is fine, but you don't know for sure. So I would say in comparison to things like that, obviously not in comparison to like staying home and not seeing anyone or, you know, not going to restaurants. Basically I would compare in comparison to doing things you would at home, such as go to the grocery store or, you know, go to a restaurant, things like that. I would say it was safer. I felt safer. I, I won't say, sorry, I won't say it was safer. I felt safer. I felt like they were doing more um, based on the fact that they do take your temperature. Granted, like you could be asymptomatic, but I did, I did feel like they were doing the best that they could. I did see times in which people weren't wearing their masks properly. I did also see cast members going after guests and I think, I think what happened, I won't, I mean, I don't want to speculate because I didn't actually see the full thing happen, but I did, I did see some cast members. We were going to go on rock and roller coaster and they were calling in about these, this group of male guests that were like, I would say they're older, maybe in the forties or fifties. And from what they were saying, it seemed like maybe the guests weren't properly wearing their masks and they did go after them. I don't know if they kicked them out. I know that they do say that they will 
and have the right to kick you out if you're not wearing a mask. I did see from the guests that weren't wearing masks, people did, I did see cast members going after them and saying like, you need to be wearing a mask. So they are enforcing it. Um, they do say like, if you're not, if you're eating, you know, you can take off your mask temporarily. Anytime we were eating, you know, outside and we're taking off our masks, I would literally just like take a bite and put it back on. Like I didn't want to be sitting around without my mask on. They did have a lot of hand sanitizer and we were using that constantly. Like I feel like every time we saw a hand sanitizer station, which they have them after all the rides, they have them throughout the park. They have tons of hand sanitizer stations. We would use it every single time we saw one, even if, you know, we hadn't touched anything just to kind of get in the habit of it. So I felt like that was really good. Um, but yeah, overall, I feel like it was very evident. They would have announcements throughout the park saying that, you know, please wear your mask and they would reinforce that. So for the health and safety of I feel like they were doing a good job of trying to remind people, trying to enforce it, making it super obvious that those were the rules. And um, the, I'd say the parts I did not feel safe in the sense that like, there were guests that wouldn't wear their masks properly. Like if you're standing in line, granted in all the lines they had you separated, but there were guests who would have it below their nose or they were just like hanging out. And they would, like I saw maybe, maybe like 10 guests or so that were just like blatantly not when those cast members weren't around, they just for no reason just had it off and just weren't caring. So I would say that like, I didn't trust anyone when I was there in the sense of just like not knowing, you know, if they were gonna abide by the rules. But I do feel like when it came to distancing, I mean, they had to, people did a good job. And if there was people around us that were getting too close, we would just kind of like give them a look and then they would usually like recognize like where they're supposed to be standing. But we didn't have any issues in terms of people like not, well, there was a couple people here and there, but the vast majority of people were wearing masks and, and like obeying it. So I feel like in that aspect, I felt safe. But anyways, this is turning into a rant, but, um, but yeah, I feel like overall, like it felt safe. But again, going back to like, was that the best time to go? Probably not. In some moments I felt, you know, like it was more crowded than others. Sometimes it would come in waves of crowds and then sometimes there'd be like no one there at all. So pros and cons and we were both, you know, two individuals who could quarantine beforehand, get tested beforehand, could quarantine afterwards without interacting with anyone um outside of like i mean besides joel i have not seen anyone or been around anyone so i felt like you know because i'm doing this obviously it's like i don't want my actions to impact others and so i felt like i could do it in a way which yeah like joel stuck with me but we can do it in a way where we're not seeing other people um obviously there's still a risk that i you know doing that but i felt like for the most part i could do it without putting other people at risk because of my decisions anyways i could go on and on and on and on about that and uh could talk about it for like 30 minutes i'm gonna keep moving on but i think overall it's just hard because i'm not gonna sit back and say what i did was the most responsible thing ever and it was totally safe and totally fine because it's not true it's like you know ultimately you know people wouldn't be traveling and doing things in a pandemic and everyone's staying at home but here we are nine months later and i feel like for the first you know couple months didn't go anywhere, didn't see anyone, you know, but it's just like, it's just, it's just hard. And I, I do truly think everyone has the best intentions and it's just getting really difficult in terms of people feeling unsafe. And I think people get really afraid in the way they act out of fear. I mean, I know for me, like I haven't been the best. I haven't been the most patient. I haven't been the most kind and gracious towards others. I think that I myself have felt drained a lot the past like nine months and I'm just over it at this point but we can't really be in a space where we're over it because we gotta just keep pushing forward and hold oh, on. I don't know, it's just been a rough time. Anyways, getting into the next question. I don't wanna go on a rant. Um, if you had the chance of going to work at Disney two, th two to three times a year, would you do it in what role? Um, actually, I was offered, so I mean, real life example, I was offered to go seasonal when I left Disney and had I lived close enough or had a good plan of how I would do it, I totally would have just kept my role and gone seasonal. I think that would be really fun and that would have been a great way to like still be able to participate. But um, living in Seattle, I honestly just couldn't think of a way in which that would make sense or that would work. I would have to either, you know, take my entire vacation time at my new job, like the full two weeks and like go work for Disney and not do any other vacations for the rest of the year. Or I could 
and I'd have to either like rent out like like stay at a hotel or stay with friends and just like inconvenience people. So there just really wasn't a way in which I felt like I could do that where it would make sense. Um, but yeah, I would have loved to do that. So if there was a chance where it made sense and it was easy to do and yeah, I could do that and keep my job and not use all my vacation time. I could still do other things. Yeah, but I just felt like overall, it just didn't really make sense. Also the lighting is just, Seattle is just so much fun. Okay, I feel like that's more true to color. It's hard because it's sunny. <laughs> it was sunny and now it's cloudy. And then like yesterday it was just raining. Like Seattle weather is so bipolar. And the time was like these, I'm like, I wish I was had a setup where I could just film and the lighting was always true to color and I could just do the same thing and it would be so much easier. But here we are. So, um, but yeah, to answer your question, um, I think I would if I had the chance to, or if it was like realistic, it's just not. Um, what role, honestly, I really liked doing both the character attendant role and also the performer role for completely different reasons. I think they all have their perks. So in an ideal world where both of those roles still existed, unlike right now, I would probably do something like that, like either a tenant or a performer, maybe a mix of both. I think it was just really fun and I do really miss it um, overall, especially when I feel like, you know, I'm not able to really impact other people the way I used to. I feel like I can still do that with YouTube videos, but sometimes in my work, I'm just like, I don't really feel like I'm actually like making a difference in someone's life. Whereas I felt like, Working there, I had the ability to impact people and just really make them feel loved and appreciated. And that brought me a lot of joy. So moving on to the shimmery, I basically, for the eyeshadow, all I did was kind of combine these two over and over again to kind of create the look that I did. But I just kind of mixed these two until I felt like it was where I wanted it to be. And then I'm gonna take this shimmer shade here. But first, I'm going to take my Too Faced Glitter Glue and just pop that into the, the negative space where I haven't really applied any eyeshadow yet and then I will apply the glitter shade. But moving on with the questions, um, someone asked, have you always been a performing type, been in acting, dance, or musical theater before? And the answer is yes. I did dance a lot. I did acting a lot. I actually did a ton of like acting and modeling when I was a kid. I absolutely loved it. I just love the creativeness behind it. And I always really wanted to be an actress, which is probably why I like creating YouTube videos because I get the authority to have the idea, sit down, film it, edit it, the whole thing, you know, be in the video. And I just really love that process of having an idea and bringing it to life. And that's also probably why I loved, loved working for Disney because I felt like I could be acting and it was just really fun. And yeah, I've always loved acting and bringing different stories to life. And I can't sing for, for the life of me. I like to do it for fun, but I can't do it like in a professional setting. So never did musical theater, but did choir um, in elementary school and then also a little bit in high school as well. Um, I did dance, I was in cheer, I did tons of dance growing up. I love dancing. Actually, I really want to find an adult dance class. I feel like those, you know, it's hard to find ones that would really work. But I actually, right before my wedding, I had signed up for like an adult ballet class just for like some poise and stuff before, you know, the wedding. And then that didn't work out. But I think it'd be fun to do like an adult dance class or like acting classes. And I think I do get like some sort of like of that out by doing YouTube videos. But yeah, I always wanted to be an actress. That would be a dream job. And I think it, honestly, that would still be really fun or doing something in a capacity where you can like bring stories to life. I just really like the element of storytelling and having that whimsicalness and bringing joy to others. I love watching movies and yeah. So I would say, yes, I've always been very into that. Even at a young age, like little, little kid, I was always, you know, super dramatic and very into <laughs> dancing and shows and would create shows like when my parents would go on dates and stuff like that we have a babysitter me and my brother would like create a show or production and get dressed up with our babysitters and like show them afterwards so i'd say yes always been super super into it um did a lot of like drawing and stuff too when i was younger and even like in high school and in college actually i took i took acting classes in college that i really liked they were really challenging and super interesting and uh, did that. I also did um, photography classes in college and I did drawing classes in high school, I did AP art. So yeah, I've always been really into art and different things involving that. And that's probably why I like makeup too. The next question is, if you could walk into any job within the Disney company, what would it be? I would say doing something with social media only because that's kind of what I've done anyways. Like I got a degree in communications and marketing. So I feel like as an adult job, I really do like 
more of that aspect. I really find it really interesting what people interact with. And that's always been interesting for me with social media. Um, kind of frustrating right now with like the algorithm and stuff, but um, at least with Instagram, it's just a pain. But I've always found it really interesting to like analyze people and their behaviors and like what they would engage, engage with and something they wouldn't. Um, so I've always found that really fascinating and actually um, when they had focuses at my college before they got rid of it, like right before, you know, I graduated, they got rid of it, but my focus was going to be on social interaction and I feel like social media has a big part of that. And so I've always really liked that. So I think doing social media for the Walt Disney Company would be really, really fun or communications of any type I think would be really fun. So I recently got magnetic lashes and I've tried a couple different brands and honestly, overall, I think I might still do a video about it. I'm not super thrilled with it. I actually was gonna do a video where, um, oh gosh, I don't know if I can talk and do this. Um, um, but I was gonna do a video and I was planning on wearing them to Disney and I was gonna do a video like testing them out, wearing them on the rides. But as soon as I got there, they just were not staying on at all. And I actually took them off within the first like 30 minutes of being in the park and just like, nope, we're not doing this. So I'm gonna turn them in today. This is, what brand is this? Glamnetic. So I do like the application of this better because it's an eyeliner that's a lot easier to use. Whereas I was using Moxie Lash and their eyeliner, it's like a little like jar and to paint it on it for me was really really difficult to use and i feel like i've had a lot of experience using liners and doing my eyeliner over the years and doing makeup so it's like i can imagine for someone that has no experience how difficult that would be let me just pop this in really quick that was the thing too is i feel like i had to draw on the line thicker because it wasn't like recognizing it when it was a thin line like i want to do a really really thin liner and it just wasn't working and I feel like with this type of like application, I didn't like the fact that it was so messy using the other one, but it definitely stuck better than with this. Like I feel like with this, it just didn't register it for whatever reason. I don't know if you have to wear it like without any eyeshadow underneath it. Maybe that's the trick, but I just felt like it was just messy and it didn't work. Um, so let me try to find. So I might still do a video talking about it because I feel like a lot of hype is out there right now about magnetic lashes and a lot of the promos you see are like making it look so much easier than applying glue and in some ways it's like yes but i was hoping it'd be easier than what it was so these are the moxie lashes that are happy lash i really like the style of this one um but this is meant to be used with the other liner and i thought like oh maybe you can mix and match the liners no <laughs> i feel like it doesn't really work as well it kind of still works but it's just like We're gonna try and make this work and see. But like in the videos where they're like, oh my gosh, it's so perfect. I mean, that was pretty easy, but I feel like it's just like sitting there. Like I feel like it's just tapped on. I don't feel like it's like secure. Actually, that looks pretty good. We'll, we'll see. But it's like coming up a little bit. I can see it like not being super grounded, but actually that turned out better than I thought, so gonna seem like I was a liar. <laughs> but no, seriously, this is not, I mean, it'll look good for the first time, but also if you try to reapply a couple different times, it'll pick up the liner and it will, you'll have to relay it down. It's just kind of a mess, but we're just gonna, we're gonna try it. So for now it looks okay, but we'll see how, how long this lasts. I'm gonna do the other side off camera really quick and come right back. Okay, so those are the lashes. I'm not, again, super happy with it. I can't really move it, because once I move it, it'll pick it up and it will never stay down. But like this one, it's just like, not perfectly hugging it and I'm just, I know I'm picky. Even this one like in the back corner, I feel like it's not actually on. So we'll see, actually this is going better than it has been before, but yeah, it's just not been the best experience trying out these lashes. So we'll see, I might still do a video about it. This actually, for whatever reason, looks like it's doing better than it has the past couple times I've tried it, so maybe I'm just getting used to it. Um, anyways, moving on, I think I'm gonna do my foundation next, but to get another question. Next question is, is there anything you regret from your time at Disney? Um, I don't really think so. I think that, um, I guess the only thing I kind of regret is not being there a little bit longer. I was technically only there for 10 months. Um, I also knew exactly what I wanted and was able to, I felt like successfully get in there and, you know, enjoy my time and then just kind of get out of it. But 
I guess the only thing I regret is not being there a little bit longer. Um, at the time, it felt like it was just going on forever and I felt like I'd been there for a long time. That could also be just because I'm very much so like a homebody and I just love my family and friends and I really missed them when I was there. So it could be coming from that. But um, yeah, I guess just being there maybe a little bit longer. Um, but at the time I was like, I remember thinking like, I'm, I'm ready to go home. Um, but yeah, overall, I don't really have anything I regret because I knew when I was leaving, like I had planned out pretty early on also, I'm using the Giorgio Armani Luna Silk Foundation. This is one of my all-time favorite foundations, but it's really pricey, so I don't really, I haven't gotten it in a while, but I got it during the Sephora sale, because I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's go for it. Haven't done this in a long time, so that's what I'm using. But, um, but yeah, I'd say I, I didn't really regret a whole lot because I knew pretty early on how long I was going to be there. And I do feel like if you, do things with the end in mind, like knowing everything, because it's true in life with everything. Everything has a uh, expiration date. You know, most of the time we just aren't aware of it when it comes to jobs or relationships or time with people. But I feel like if we lived and acted as if it did, I think we would have less regrets and things. And I think I could do a better job of that in each stage of life I'm in. Like even right now, like I. I've been trying really hard to appreciate, even though there's a lot of things I'm frustrated about with just, you know, being home and wanting normal back. But I think, you know, how cool that for the first like couple months of our marriage, Joel and I get to spend so much time together. Obviously sometimes it's a little bit too much time, but like how cool that we get to have this time together and we get to really spend it with each other. And it is a really unique situation, but how cool that we get to just, you know, basically I spent the whole entire quarantine being married and living in our, new house together and getting to really appreciate it and enjoy it in ways that normally I wouldn't see him most of the day. So I've been trying to appreciate each stage because obviously there's things that you miss about previous stages and there's also things that you miss about future stages. But I try to remind myself of that. It's like you could waste time regretting things or missing things, which I think it's, t it's fine to do, you know, sometimes. But I feel like in each stage I've been in, I've always, looked forward to the next one or missed something in a different stage. Like even when I was at Disney, I missed, you know, being in college or I missed spending time with friends and missed being around that. And it's funny because like looking back, it's like, I just really missed my time at Disney. So I think that in each stage of life, you're always going to have regrets or you're always going to like idealize a different point in your life. But I think it's important to just do your best to really appreciate where you're at because someday this will be, you know, like the Macklemore song. These will be the good old days, but it's true. Like someday looking back when I have kids and I'm just, you know, like over it <laughs> wanting a break. Um, or even like someday when, you know, if we get a dog or something like that, I think we're going to look back and be like, wow, remember how easy that was and we didn't have all these responsibilities. And um, right now it is kind of nice. I'm only responsible for myself and, you know, for Joel. And I think there's beauty in that. And I think it's natural to want to look forward to the future and want to do, you know, look, look forward to that, but I think that there's also an importance to appreciating the stage you're in. So that's a long winded answer, but I guess to answer your question, like I do miss it and do, you know, I don't really have regrets though, because at the time I knew when I was leaving and I feel like that was a blessing in some ways because it allowed me to fully appreciate every single shift and appreciate every single interaction because I knew exactly when I was leaving and I wish sometimes I had that kind of mindset with different things in my life currently because I feel like I would be kinder to people. I would have more patience. I think I would um, give 110% more because um, sometimes I think I just kind of go through the motions because I, I take things for granted. Next, I'm going in with my cream bronzer. This is the Fenty Beauty number no. two, but a biscuit. Um, I actually, no one asked a question about this, which is totally fine because originally I wasn't going to do questions, but one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is I recently did a Patrick Ta masterclass. And if you guys don't know who Patrick Ta is, he is a celebrity makeup artist. I feel like that's what he's known best for. So he's also like an influencer type. Um, and he also is a brand owner of Patrick Ta Beauty that sold in Sephora. But long, long, long story short, 
Um, I used to work a long time ago. One of the very first jobs I did related to social media was working as a marketing assistant for the sorority secrets. And it was these uh, women who were part of the same sorority that I was, Kappa Alpha Theta, but they were based in Arizona. And I remember them coming to my chapter when I was still a Theta at UW and saying, oh, you know, we created this brand called the sorority secrets. And basically it was started off of like sharing tips with like your fellow sisters and different sororities. It wasn't like based off of just for like Theta. It was like all these different types of sororities. And, um, but they were based out of Seattle. And so I remember reaching out to Karen and saying, Hey, you know, I'd love the opportunity. We met with, I met with her a couple different times and then I became their marketing assistant. And truthfully, I learned so much from that internship that has really helped me with so many different things when it comes to like social media and YouTube and all of that. Like, I feel like everything I learned that has helped me so much when it comes to blogging or anything is, has come from that. And um, one of the other women that was part of it, same was Sakura. And she was actually really good friends with Patrick Ta, like way before all of his like success. And so when he first started out doing makeup in LA, I remember following him and being super interested in what he was doing, like way before he had done like all these celebrities makeup and I've always loved his work and thought he does such an amazing job of making people look like themselves still, but just a really flawless version. And so taking his masterclass, I was picked to do his masterclass. I have no idea how actually still like, how, well, why did who selected me? <laughs> um, very honored, but I'm just like, I don't know what I did, but I'm just going to do it. Um, so I got to do his masterclass and learning from him on how his like how he does techniques and one of the things he does and talks about is when doing foundation first he'll prep the skin a lot with a lot of moisturizer and oils and stuff like that and then um he'll go in with foundation he'll blend things out for a really long time he talked about how he will spend two hours basically doing people's makeup and just spend a lot of time blending things in and what i noticed too is he doesn't really rush to the next step he just really spends his time on one step and really works at it and then sometimes he'll come back to it and re revisit it but one thing he mentioned was doing a contour before or a bronzer before doing your concealer because often some of the things you naturally would want to conceal you actually cover up with bronzer anyways and then you use less concealer because this thing too is like less is more when it comes to using products and i have always loved the way he does things same with your makeup by is it mario i want to say mario but i think it's makeup by mario and Ariel, is it Ariel? Ariel? <laughs> Those guys that do like celebrity makeup, like for the Kardashians and things, I've always loved their style and I feel like it's really challenging. Like it looks like it's easy, but it's definitely not that easy. So I feel like I've been doing my makeup a lot recently um, after taking that class and thinking about that more. And I do think like overall, the look of it is just like my absolute favorite. So I've been trying to like work on that recently. Um, but that was a really, really cool thing that happened and I just loved the opportunity and I also might be working with them a little bit more in the future, which would be like the craziest, coolest thing ever. Um, especially since he's just an artist that I've admired for such a long time. So, and I've gotten this chance to try out some more of his products recently, which I'll be using a little bit in this video, but I feel like it was products that I was just like, I don't know if I need that, you know, like there's so many things launching right now and so many new brands. But now that I know how to use them, I feel like a lot more inspired and excited to use them because some of them are a little bit more not super user friendly in the sense that like I wouldn't know how to use it if I just bought it. Like I feel like I'd have to be taught how to use it. But then learning how to use it from him, I feel a lot more confident. But anyway, so I'm spending a lot of time doing my contour and really blending it out and working on that, but I've just used cream products so far. I haven't like set my face or anything, but I feel like it looks so natural. Like even on camera, I feel like sometimes on camera you want to do things a little bit more dramatic just so it shows up better. But I feel like this looks so subtle. I'm gonna do the sides of my nose too. But that's been something I've been working on recently. Like as an artist is getting better at doing more natural glam and working on that because I feel like as I get older, that will be something that will still I'd still want to do where some of these other trends I'm like I don't know as I get older get more wrinkles get drier skin like how well that's gonna wear on me so now that that's done I'm going to go in and do my concealer and my eyes I will get another question though from you guys so yeah the, did you feel safe at Disney already covered that um also like if I were to answer that question like working at Disney because the first time I saw that I was like 
Does she mean like working at, did you feel safe as a guest at Disney in general, visiting during the pandemic, working there? I would say, so I worked there when the Pulse shootings happened and the original target was Disney Springs, downtown Disney. Um, luckily he did not end up doing it there, but that was originally, they discovered one of his um, target locations. And I would say even before that happened, I definitely, you know, watching like true crime, things like that. Um, in college, I watched a ton of just like, you know, uh, criminal minds, things like that. Um, I was actually pretty nervous working there in the sense that I realized, oh, actually it would be pretty easy for someone to do something really horrible. And it's sad that your brain goes there, but um, after experiencing kind of some trauma and tragedy in my own life, it has helped me to kind of think through situations and think through like, okay, well, like what's the worst that could happen? What would you do in that scenario? How would you get out, you know? Um, and before the shootings happened, it was really easy for someone to, as even like as a cast member, you could borrow someone else's ID and to get on the bus, you just scan it. You didn't show anyone, they didn't check your bags. So I feel like, and sometimes too, you could like, as long as you had your ID on you, you could sneak backstage. Um, even if you were wearing like guest clothing, I don't obviously wear it now with everything going on. I seriously doubt you could do that now, but right after the shootings happened, like within the past, I mean, I was only there, I think for two weeks after that happened. And then I went home to Seattle, but, um, after that, I definitely noticed a difference in how they were doing things. And they had started to actually check the IDs and see if it matched the person that was scanning it before they got on the bus to get into, um, the parks, like as a cat behind the, as a cast member, cause you'd have to take a bus to get there. Um, and they also would check bags too, which is really good. So I feel like they were doing a better job, but there were times where I was just like, you know, especially like, you know, during events that are more crowded, like during like a parade or during like a firework show where people are unassuming thinking that, oh, you know, you have this false sense of security being at Disney. And I definitely at times thought through like, wow, like something bad could happen here. It's, you know, you think it's safe because it's Disney. And most of the time, obviously it's gonna be fine, but there are some times where, you know, you wonder like, could something bad happen? And even since then, like visiting as a guest, I feel like they've gotten a lot better at like checking bags and things like that. Um, so very grateful for that. Very grateful that they have increased security measures. I know sometimes it's not fun and right afterwards, I think people were frustrated because it would take longer to get through security. But I always try to thank people who are doing that because I recognize that they're doing all they can to keep everyone safe. And yeah, sometimes it's not fun to have to go through security and it takes a long time, but I feel like, you know, it's really, really important. And I always try to remember that whenever I'm, you know, trying to get through security and hurry, but recognizing, you know what, this is really important and I'm really grateful that they're doing this. Did you ever have to do a relook while you worked at Disney and were you nervous? So for those who don't know what that is, a relook is basically if you were working as a performer where your face is showing, um, after some time they will do uh, a relook in the sense of seeing if you still look like that character and because they, I mean, obviously at some point you, uh, you know, Ariel is 16. <laughs> And you know, she's not 56, she's 16. So um, for, to maintain the magic, they want the performers looking like the roles that they're in. So that does happen. Um, and I think that was a, a subject of anxiety for people. I left long before I feel like they could have done that. Um, and that was partially why I left in the sense that like, I didn't want to, I, there was no sense of knowing like, oh, I'll be here for definitely five years. And at five years, you know, when I'm this age, this is when they're gonna come in and tell me. It wasn't like based off of age, it was so individual. Like I knew someone, I think I mentioned this before, but I knew someone when I was working there and I think she was 31 at the time, still doing it, have been doing it for a really long time. And then there was someone else I knew who was 24. I was 23 at the time, she was 24. And being told like, oh, you're too old looking, you know, for these roles. So here's someone who's 24 and looks too old, but then there's also someone who's 31. I believe she still worked there for a little while after that too. Um, and there's people who've been doing it for like a decade. So you have women and men too, who've been doing it for a really, really long time and you know, everything's fine. And then you have other people who, like another friend of mine, she had been there for like, I wanna say like five years. She was there for a while, only got to do one role, didn't have the opportunity to do anything else. Whereas like some people come in and they have like three roles. So there was no sense of knowing like in seniority. That was like one of the things I probably liked the least about working there is there was no sense of like, you couldn't create a plan for yourself. And I think I would have stayed there longer had I had a clear plan of like, okay, well, 
if I'm here for two years, then I have, you know, more opportunities to do other roles or do parades and shows. Cause like, I love Fantasmic. That's always been my favorite show. And I think, I guess going back to the question, any regrets, I would have loved to do Fantasmic. And I guess my only regret is not staying around long enough to see if that would have ever been a reality. And that would have been the most amazing dream come true. Um, but to me, it also wasn't worth it to not know, like, I could stay here for five years and then never get the chance to do that. And would I feel like I was wasting my time being there? And ultimately I felt like I would regret it if it came to that point where I was there for a certain amount of years and didn't get to do anything else. Do you want to have kids? How many? Um, yes, definitely want to have kids. I, this year has been challenging for that reason, mainly because I want to be able to travel and do other things before having kids. And so we had some fun trips planned this year that did not happen, which was really sad. Also, sorry, another thing I wanna to talk to you guys about, I learned in the masterclass, for doing your face and setting your face, what he likes to do is take the powder, press it into your palm, so that way it absorbs in the sponge better. And then when you apply it, it's not super like fluffy and it's more, I'd say like fine, but I feel like it's helped to really like soften the skin. And I feel like it's so much easier setting my face and baking it doing this technique. But anyways, so I'm just kinda of like setting my face before going in with some powders. Um, but yeah, sorry, kids. <laughs> um, definitely wanna have kids at some point. Um, I think I want to be able to travel and do these things before having kids. And same with like pets, I'd love to have a dog. At some point we've talked about it. We've talked about like, should we get a dog right now? And although it would be easy in the sense of um, being able to be at home with the dog and train the dog, I think there's that aspect of it. That I'm like, oh, that would be really nice using the Hula Light bronzer to bronze my face. Um, I think that we are still a couple of years off from having kids. I mean, who knows, but I would still like to be able to have my actual wedding and not uh, be pregnant at it or have a child at it, you know? Uh, <laughs> so there's that. But yeah, I think that, you know, originally the plan was maybe in a couple of years, but that might be extended. We'll see just based off of, you know, how things go from here, how much longer we're gonna be in this because we had trips that we really wanted to do that we didn't get the chance to do and I still, I think that's important to spend time together as a couple before having kids because, I mean, once you have kids, you can't not have kids. So you don't really get a break. And then, I mean, the next break I guess you'd have is, you know, once the kids move out, you know, move out and go to college, but that's not for a really long time. So yeah, just try to really enjoy this stage that we're in. But yes, do you want kids? How many? I think it just really is, you know, depends. Definitely want to have at least two, like minimum of two, maybe more. But again, depends like if we get, you know, two boys or two girls, I think I'd wanna try again just to try to get, you know, one of each. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so I think it just, it just kind of depends. Using for blush today, I'm using the Patrick Ta blush. This is in the shade She Seductive. I really like the blushes because I feel like I have a hard time finding blushes that just look really natural. I feel like there's a lot of blushes that look too orange or pink and, or have too much shimmer, you know, too like, too pigmented, but I love these blushes because this to me like looks like a bronzer and it looks like it's not gonna be pigmented at all. But when you pop it on, you can see it's just like a faint, it's not even like a pink, it's just like a, it's, it's a blush. To me, I feel like I actually look like I'm blushing. I feel like it looks like my skin and it looks like the color, like I would naturally blush. And I feel like that's what blush is meant for. So I've been loving his blushes. I have this one and I have this, she's so LA blush and those are actually the she so la blush is the first blush or first product of his that i got and i i feel like his blushes to me are just absolutely stunning and they look really natural so if you guys were to try anything of his i'd say blushes for me are like the number one that i really like um but the next question I got was, how do you do your beautiful loose curls? Um, and I find that really funny because I have struggled so much with my hair for like the longest time and it's never made sense to me, which is funny because like, I feel like a lot of people like do makeup and hair and they like get both. But for me, hair just like does not make any sense. And I just, I don't know how to braid my hair. Like it's just, it's a struggle. Um, but I feel like I finally figured out how to do um, like curl my hair in a way, like that's one of the few things I can do is like curl my hair in a way that I really like. And so <laughs> I find that really funny. Um, but I should do a tutorial for you guys because it's really easy. Basically, it's just like the most, I think a lot of it, ha I will say a lot of hair, hair is so different on so many different people. 
And I think that, you know, I'm really lucky with the hair that I have. I've learned how to use the hair that I have. My hair is a little more on the thin side. I do have a lot of it, but it is more thin. Um, it is more like wavy. I did actually blow dry it. I have like one of those like blow dry brushes and it gives like kind of like a blowout look, which I really like, but I feel like my hair is easier than other people's hair. So I also don't want to like take that for granted and be like, it's super easy. I mean, it is for me, but I think for other people, everyone has such different hair textures. Um, basically what I do is I take a wand and what I've been doing recently is like doing it like the quickest possible um, because I think that I'm the type of person that gets too detailed with it and then it just takes take forever with it and then it's like too curly. But I will literally break my hair into three sections. Again, I have really fine hair so or thin hair, so it's easy for me to do to break it apart in three sections like on each side. And I'll like, just take this section here I'll wrap it around and curl it and hold it for maybe like five seconds and let it go. And I'll do that on both sides. So it's just like really like lightly curled, but I feel like that looks really, really nice. So that's what I've been doing recently to curl my hair. Or actually what I did the entire trip was I literally just blew out my hair with like the, the blow dryer brush. I've never like trusted those. And then I recently got my hair done and Lizzie who does my hair was saying like, oh, you should try it. A lot of people like it. And I haven't owned a blow dryer in five years. <laughs> so I decided to try it and I actually love the way it looks. I feel like it looks better to me than like straightening my hair because it still has a little bit of wave to it. But the entire trip, that's all I did was I just blew out my hair in the morning and then if it got ruined by the rain, it got ruined by the rain and it was totally fine. But yeah, I've been really enjoying doing that and I, I should do a tutorial on how I do my hair. It's very simple, but at the same time, I recognize it wouldn't be like that for everyone because people have different hair textures. Um, How did you manage to grow your eyebrows that long without pulling? Honestly, my eyebrows, I guess I'm doing pretty good right now, I would say. I retinted them right before I left, which I feel like helps bring out some of the pigment from when I got them microbladed. Um, but I mean, you can see my brows definitely are not there. Like I wouldn't feel confident, like peace out, leaving the house, like I'm done, my makeup looks done. I wouldn't feel com comfortable or confident doing that just because they do look more sparse. I feel like a lot of it has to do with how I do my brows. And I will show you guys how I do my brows. For my brows, this is something I bought for his class because I figured he'd probably be using it, but it's something that I would never buy for myself. Like for example, like I wouldn't go out and buy like a brow gel. I don't have eyebrows. Why would I buy a brow gel when I don't have any eyebrows to be like, you know, gelling in the first place? So it's the same thing with this, like a brow wax. I was like, why would I need that? I mean, I get the ones that have beautiful luscious eyebrows, like all of his models do. Why would I need this? Um, but I bought this because I figured he'd be using it in the class and I was just kind of curious. With this brow wax, I get the clear one. It's kind of challenging to use, I will admit. You want to get it wet, so you get it wet first to like activate it. That was another thing too, I'm like, how do you use this? Um, you get the wax wet first, and then you take a spoolie on a brush, and you just kind of run it through like that, and get it on the spoolie, and then you run it through your brows. So even if you don't have brows, if you have barely any brows, it's still worth it. So running it through and you can actually see, here I'll move forward so you can see better. The brows that I do actually have, it's like laying them down almost as if, if you were like gluing down your brows to do like a, like a, a drag look or something like that. So it's like laying them down. Like you can just press them down like that. So I'm just running it through, kind of going up towards the front and then down towards the middle and then on the back. You can see though, I have like barely, there's like barely any hair there. There really isn't a whole lot of hair. So I'm glad I can fake it. And you guys think I have eyebrows, but I don't. It's honestly like dream come true for me. Um, but you can see, I really don't have a whole lot of hair there that I'm working with. But you lay this down and I think you're supposed to technically get it more wet beforehand. But as it's drying, you let it dry for a little bit. But you can see like the texture is a little bit different. Like. My brow hairs, it might be hard here. Volume keeps changing, but if you guys can see, that's a little better. The hairs are like almost like glued down to my face. So that's like the first step and I kind of like let that dry, but I've noticed that the products I use afterwards. So this whole thing is not necessarily for to actually lay down my brow hair so they don't move. For me, this is more to act as a really good base before going in with any other brow products. So I'll kind of like let that sit for a second. And then afterwards, I will take the like full proof, full proof, <laughs> full proof brow powder from Benefit and just taking that on a brow brush. 
and this is in the shade six. I'm taking the lighter side first in the front half of my brows. And just, can you see how easily, it acts as like a primer. It like goes down so much easier than it would have before. And I just feel like it blends out better and it just makes my products, my brow products work better because it almost acts as like a primer. So I will first go in with a powder and then afterwards, I'll show you guys the whole thing. But then afterwards, I'll go in with my Milani Weekend Brow. And what I will do is I will use that over the powder, but I feel like it just like makes the hair, it like, I don't know how to explain it. Like I feel like, oopsies. I feel like texture has a lot to do with a lot of it. And I feel like when, if you're using like, let's just say you put down like a skincare product and your brows, like you had set your brows, it's kind of like an oily base. This is gonna look not as sharp because of using this as like a, a base, it actually looks so much sharper. So when I do these little fine lines in the front, like it actually, again, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll have to darken it up again it actually looks like hair strokes way easier and way better than if I had, you know, not done this. And so I've actually <laughs> look like a crazy person right now. So this is one of those things I bought. I was just like, up, oh, it's going to be a sunk cost, you know, buying this for the class. I probably won't ever use it again. Maybe I'll use it on someone who do their makeup, but I have actually been so pleasantly surprised by using this. Cause I again thought that it would not work for me at all. not having any brow hair, but once I figured out how to use it, that was the other thing too. I bought it. I was like, I have no idea how I would use this. The first time I used it, I used it dry and I was like, this is not working for me. But now since I figured out how to use it, it works so well. And I feel like it makes my brows look amazing. However, I will say, um, I, I don't think it acts as a good base. If you are going to be going out in a Florida tropical storm, such as the one I experienced when I was there because uh, as soon as the rain came and it literally washed away my brows. Update, it's a little wet, a little rainy here, but uh, we're thriving, really. It just, yeah, my brows were just gone. It did not work at all. I think because using the wax as a base, it also, it looks really good if you're in a dry climate. Granted, the rain that I was experiencing in Florida was just like torrential straight, like a water faucet on my face. What a great way to end the night, you know? It's a little bit, a little bit of water here. Uh, and then we went back to the hotel, didn't realize it was gonna rain. It was dry, we started walking, and then now it's uh, Florida. So I will say it does not work super great being like, it's not waterproof. Um, and that was like the first time I've ever experienced that where I literally went to the bathroom and I was like, oh, my brow is gone. And like half my brow is just gone. Um, so that was pretty funny. But I will say that using this on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, going out in a little bit of rain, you'll be fine. It was literally like, imagine putting your head under a faucet. Um, and letting the water run out on your face is what I was experiencing in Florida. So, but just kind of quickly doing this, I'm not doing the best job, I'm just kind of quickly running through this. But I want you guys to see how like, it's like, it's crazy how much like, looks like I have an eyebrow, but really I don't <laughs> like, it's amazing. This, this, this product is amazing. So honestly, this is one of the few things that recently I've been like trying out and figuring out for myself and figuring out how to use. And it's something that I thought was like a total waste and was not going to work out, but I feel like it just amplifies and it actually makes it look like I have those full, beautiful brows that his models always have. So that's cool. So anyways, I'm going to go do this eyebrow off camera and come right back to show you guys what I look like with both brows on. All right, I'm back. And so are my brows. One of the last things I'm going to do is highlight my face. I recently got again, Patrick Ta, uh, the major face gloss this is like their holiday launch. And I was super intrigued because he used this in the masterclass when he was doing makeup and you just need the smallest amount of it. You could take it on like a sponge. You could also take it like on a brush. I'll just use like a fluffy brush to show you guys. So I'll pick up the smallest amount of that, like literally the most minuscule amount. And I'll put it on top of my powdered skin. So a lot of times I feel like I don't use creams on top of powders. It can look sometimes very like splotchy and very um, cakey, but he showed us how to do this. And you just take the lightest amount and I would just lightly dust that onto the high points of my face. So like my cheekbones, 
It's just kind of blending it and it's a gloss, so it is more of like a wet texture. But I feel like using this instead of using like a shimmery powder highlight, for me at least, because I do have more dry skin, it looks so much more like glow, radiance from within. And I feel like sometimes those types of shimmers, if I use too much of it, if you look straight ahead, you can still like pick it up. But I feel like with this, from any angle, it honestly just looks so luminous, I guess for lack, I mean, that's truly what it does, is it kind of like illuminates your face and makes you look really hydrated. And the look I feel like before was looking very matte. And I feel like this just kind of helps bring it back to life. I will take a little bit actually of the sponge just to kind of blend it in. There we go. That looks better. But I just have absolutely been loving this. Again, one of those products very similar to the wax where I felt like before I would have had no idea how to use this and I would have not felt confident using this at all. It's actually really interesting. A lot of people like when I bought this from Sephora, a lot of people had like reviewed it and said it was horrible and they didn't like it. But a little bit, like you can't even see how much I used. It was the smallest amount, it goes such a long ways. And you can use it like on your neck. It's a gloss, you can use it everywhere. I'll even use it all over my lips afterwards too. But it adds a really nice, I'll show you. It adds a really nice little like glow. See, look at that, great. But this is something that I've actually been loving recently and was super excited to try out because the way he showed it off in the class. He also showed us how to put it on your eyelids. I'll be honest, I'm really not good at that and I feel like that is where I, it turns into a mess. So I'm still trying to figure that out but I feel like I have the concept down of how to use it all over your face. And it is like a gloss though so if you do, you could get hair in it and it would kind of stick to it. That's like the only downside. But other than that, I just feel like it looks so pretty and it's one of those things i could literally take a photo from any angle like even straight ahead and it still looks like luminous in the areas the light's catching but it doesn't look weirdly shimmery if that makes sense the very last thing i'm doing is lips i'm using also his lip products as well this is the lip liner in the shade she must be new and it also goes with the lipstick by the same name she must be new these are sold separately you could get one or the other honestly i think i would have been fine just getting the lip liner and using that as a lipstick but to each their own so just gonna pop this on. I actually can't talk while I'm doing lips. So I don't know why I say this. But I'm just outlining them first and then filling them in with the lipstick. I always like to do an initial outline and then with a clean finger, just go along the edges and you do get some of it on your finger, but I feel like it just kind of smooths it out. And that's how I get like a smoother edge. But this is such a pretty color and then Going in with the slightest amount of the face gloss again. Just ping it from the beast. Actually, that was too much. Too much. Smallest amount. And now it's like a gloss. But seriously, like this is, I did this the other day. I was just playing around with my makeup and I just love how it turned out. So I decided to recreate it for a video. And this combination, I just feel like it's so perfect for fall. Even like the holidays, I love doing like a really subtle eye with like a pop of a bold lip. That's like probably one of my favorite things about fall is doing something like this. So anyways, I'm gonna take off the ears and show you guys the finished look. And you could easily wear this with like straight hair. You could just like blow out your hair. You could also do curls. I feel like this works with a lot of things. You put your hair up in a ponytail. Like honestly, I feel like this works a lot of different things, but this is what it looks like all together. I feel like I answered most of your guys' questions. The only ones I didn't really cover are the home videos ones or the questions about the home. And I do have more home videos coming. I just had a lot of Halloween makeup tutorials that I felt like I could only do in October. So I definitely still have a lot of videos for you guys on the home renovations. It looks amazing. I love how it looks. I love decorating it too. It's just been really, really fun. So thank you guys so much for enjoying this like chatty, get ready with me type video. I hope you guys are all doing well. Please let me and in the comment section down below let me know something that has brought you joy recently or something that you're appreciative of i feel like there's just been so much negativity recently i would love to see what's going great in your guys's lives and i hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy so thank you so much for watching this video i hope to see you in my next one and have a great day <laughs> bye <laughs>